Hi, my name is Polly Frenchu, and I'm with the Electrical Construction and Maintenance Department here at Dunwoody. Today we're going to learn about sine waves and AC circuits. Okay, now that you know what a sine wave is, let's go on to actually go down into the depth and um, the basics of them. So what we have is this basic waveform. Okay? As we said before, we're doing a rotation through a rotating magnetic field. We either have stationary magnets or we have moving magnets, stationary coils. Those are two of the ways that we would produce it. So as we go through our sine wave starting at that zero degree, up to 90, back to 180, down to 270, back to 360, at each point along this sine wave is actually a um, instantaneous value of voltage or an instantaneous value of current. So at each point along this sine wave, and each of these points is considered a degree. So if we go to your actual trig, as you know in a trig table we have a one first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, and our fourth quadrant. At each of these quadrants we have a, a variety of degree points from that center point. So if I bring one out, say, and I have a, say, a 30 degree angle here, from this point up to here, to this point is how far I have created or cut through those lines of flux. So I started at not cutting any, I've slowly cut, slowly cut, so now I'm at a 30 degree angle. On my waveform, or my sine wave, that would be about here. Now it is called a sine wave for one of many reasons. One of the main reasons is the fact that as we look at our triangle, we see we do have a right triangle here. With that right triangle, we actually have our adjacent side, our opposite side, and our hypotenuse. Okay, when we actually talk about an instantaneous voltage, we are talking about the hypotenuse and our side opposite. Our side opposite is going to represent that instantaneous voltage at that particular degree angle. The hypotenuse is going to rec or represent our peak voltage, how high it actually gets. Okay, in AC, for an AC theory, you actually only hit this peak voltage twice per cycle. Now in the US, we have 60 hertz, generally speaking. One hertz is equal to 60, one, one cycle per second. In 60 hertz, we actually have 60 cycles per second. So a good way to think about it is I have to rotate through this magnetic field 3,600 times per minute in order to get 60 hertz of cycles. So as we go through this peak point, that is representative of our hypotenuse. Here's our side adjacent. And as we know from their formula, sine of theta is equal to side opposite over hypotenuse. Okay. Now instead of having sine theta is equal to opposite or hypo over hypotenuse, let's instead say sine theta, as we said our side opposite is representative of our instantaneous voltage, so that would be E instantaneous, and our hypotenuse is representative of our E peak voltage, or the max voltage that is produced, or created by that rotation of the field. So when we get this formula, we actually want to figure out what is our instantaneous voltage at this point. So by transposing this particular formula, we are able to come up with E peak, or peak voltage, times our sine of theta, or the angle that we're traveling at right here, is equal to our instantaneous voltage at that particular point in time within the cycle. For instance, we said we had a 30 degree angle. So let's look at this 30 degree angle and plug in our formula. Let's say we have a peak voltage here of, let's say, oh, say 70 volts. Okay, so we have a peak voltage there of 70 volts. We know that our sine of 30 degrees is 0.5. So taking that information, I can take 70 volts times the sine of theta, which is 0.5,
and I am able to come up with 35 volts instantaneous at this particular point in my sine wave. As I continue to travel through this, we know this is 35 points, 35 volts here. Well, as we continue to travel, continue to travel, continue to travel, as we get down to here, and we're sitting at, say, 150 degrees, so we're still at that 150 degrees, same thing is going to hold true. Here's our hypotenuse, which is representative of our peak voltage, or the peak that we would reach, and this opposite side would be representative of our instantaneous voltage value at that particular point. So as we continue through and cutting our lines of flux, we reach this point. What is our voltage at that point? Well, it is basically right directly across from this one. Once again, we have those 30 degrees. We create that right angle. Here's our side opposite. Here's our hypotenuse with our peak voltage. This then would be our instantaneous voltage. And we would apply the same formula of 70 volts peak times 0.5, because at, at 150 degrees now, we are at 0 0.5. And at, 30 at 150 degrees, we would equal 35 volts instantaneous. Once we continue to travel down again, and we get to this point within that sine wave, down into the third quadrant, we are now in a negative value. We are also into a negative sine wave. Okay, so we're at that negative alternation as opposed to our positive alternation. So as we go through again, we are now gone past 180 point. We have continued down and we are now at 210 degrees. When we get to that 210 degree mark, once again, we would have an instantaneous voltage. But because we are on the negative portion of our sine wave, or on the negative portion of that rotation, we would then have our E peak, once again, times the sine now of 210 degrees, which would be a negative 0.5, thereby giving us a negative 35 volts at that particular point within our sine wave. As we continue to go around again, ending into our fourth quadrant, once again, coming here at 330 degrees, our hypotenuse is still going to represent our E peak and our side opposite is still going to represent E instantaneous. As we get to this point here in the sine wave, we are at 330 degrees. Taking our formula instantaneous, we have 70 volts peak times a negative 0.5 at a, at a 330 degree would give me a negative 35 volts. And as we can see, we are in the negative portion of our alternation. So each sine wave will have up to or far more than 360 degrees of rotation. So as we go through at each one of these points would be an individual voltage until we reach that peak. Then we would start to collapse again, coming back down. And as we found, those voltages stay the same as we're either going up or coming down, rotating back into this negative cycle, going downward, peaking again, and returning back up. That explains how we do instantaneous voltage.